evening, everyone. Good evening. We'd like to call the Community Mental Health Board meeting to order. And we'll begin with reading our mission statement. Macomb County Community Mental Health, guided by the values, strengths, and informed choices of the people we serve, provides quality services which promote recovery, community participation, self-sufficiency, and independence. Next is adoption of the agenda. Motion by Nagovin, support by Burke. Any questions or comments on the agenda? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Adoption. Uh, the agenda is adopted. Next is the hearing of the public. Is there anyone from the public that would like to address this board? You have five minutes. Please identify yourself and give us your um, address. Business address is fine. Okay, hi everyone, good evening. Um, my name is Annette Downey, I'm from the Oakland Community Health Network, which is located at 5505 Corporate Drive in Troy, Michigan. Um, I know so many of you from attending the conferences and our Tri-County dinners and such, uh, but I wanted to take the opportunity to bring you some cookies. Um, I hope you each got one, they uh, have people on them, and it's a reminder of the campaign that we're trying to spread enthusiasm throughout the state, and the campaign is called Hashtags, Less Labels, More Respect. Uh, the basis of it is um, there's a lot of there's a lot of basis to it. If, if you know the work of Wolf Wolfensburg, uh, it was called the normalization principle and social roles. Um, but he's a, a professor, a PhD, that did research on the fact that when people uh, are labeled or viewed as different than the rest of us, they're more likely to be devalued. And certainly in these times of fiscal challenges, and when we want legislators to value the people we support, it's a good time to uh, make sure that we aren't doing anything that. Brings stigma uh, to those that we serve and uh, stigma does sometimes come with terms such as client consumer patient resident these kind of things uh, so the movement is about just referring to the people we support in the most respectful way possible and I have found people sometimes remember the message best uh, when you get them in the stomach so I brought a couple trays lots of cookies left please uh, I'm leaving all that are left here so share them um, and I hope you'll join us in, in this push to uh, enhance the respect in the language we use when referring to those we're so honored to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Is there anyone else that would like to address this board? Hi, uh, Kim Cassio, parent, um, Clinton Township, Michigan. Um, just two quick things. Um, I wanted to say thank you to the director for answering my emails about self-determination. I greatly appreciate it. And as much as you know, we all like to come up here and talk about the things that are wrong, I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you. I really appreciate that. And, um, and then the other thing I just I wanted to mention, this is not a big thing, but I just feel like if we don't let people know what's going on, you don't know. <laughs> so I had a um, phone call with the Access Center. All I needed to do is change my daughter's supports coordination company. Um, her, her supports coordinator left her current position. I wasn't happy with the company that we were with and her supports coordinator left so I thought it was a good time for me to move on to somewhere else. Um, I called the Access Center um, and I spoke to a, um, the initial screener, told her the whole situation. She took down my information and then I was put on hold. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody knows this, but your hold is, there's no actual hold. It's just a constant ringing phone. I mean, she did warn me, but I gotta say, after you know a couple hundred rings, it was really kind of <laughs> annoying. Um, and when I finally did speak with the cl clinician, um, he did eventually set me up with an appointment, and that all was great. But I just wanted to let you know, it took me one hour to do that. Be from the time I talked to the screener until I finally was finished and hung up the phone, it took an hour. And the um, clinician, pretty much started from scratch as, you know, what's her name, what's her diagnosis, what's her, but, you know, I explained that she's already in the system, we already have a um, plan of care, 
we already have all of those things set up. I just need an appointment to switch the, you know, as I explained. Um, but anyway, I, it's a minor thing, but I just wanted to let you know that it's just a compounded thing when there's each thing you do is apparent. It, everything is like that. Every little thing you do is like that. Nothing is, it should have been a five minute phone call to set up an appointment. But just so FYI, and um, that was all I had today. So thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address this board? Anyone else? Seeing none, then we'll move on with our agenda to uh, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the board that was held on June 26 of 2019. Motion by Phillips. Support. Supported by Fantuzzi. Any questions or comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Next is item six, approval of the standing committee meeting minutes, uh, program and budget held on July 10 of 2019. Motion by Kraft, support by Bush. Any questions or comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next is item seven and that is request to approve. There's a number of um, requests to approve. And these were all discussed at the Program and Budget Committee. Need to approve items 7A through K. Support. Okay, how about if we go just through... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Keep backing up. How about if we go through um, H? I'm, I'm sorry, G. And then we'll do the others individually, just because there's some major contracts there. We want to lump them all together. Um, all right, so motion by uh, Kraft to approve 7A through G. And who seconded that? Uh, Burke supported that. All right, any discussion, further discussion on that? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next is item 7H, and that is to approve the revised policy uh, 2-006 service provider appeals. Again, we discussed that and heard the presentation last, last meeting. Any further? Oh, I need a motion first. Motion by Bush, support. support by Schmidt. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next is request to approve the PHP fiscal year 2019 contract amendment number four. Move to approve that it's the final amendment. Right, no more. <laughs> four and no more. No more. Uh, motion by Kraft, support by Phillips. All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next is item J. Request to approve the fiscal twenty fiscal year twenty PIHP contract. Move to approve. Support. Motion by Bush, support by Schmidt. Any comments or questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We've approved that great big long pile of I mean that big long <laughs> document. It's paper. I was going to say paper. Right. When I saw in the thing, it was there's like what two thousand pages to tonight's agenda or something. It's like good grief. Um, next is item K, Macomb County Community Mental Health Fiscal Year 2019-2020 budget, and that was discussed at our finance meeting, program and budget meeting last two weeks ago. Any f further questions on that? I need a motion, first of all, to approve yeah, it. Okay. 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 That was the, the pile of papers. <laughs> so, uh, um, motion? Do it, someone want to move to approve that? Move to approve. Support. Motion by Schmidt, support by Bush. Any further questions on that? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We've approved the budget. 
and that will go to the office of the executive and eventually end up at the board of commissioners for final approval um, next is item eight to receive and file Macomb County Community Mental Health Financial Status Report, the mid-year report, fiscal year 18-19. Again, we heard the presentation at the program and budget meeting. Need a motion? Motion to approve. Support. Motion by Phillips, support by, I'm sorry, motion by Schmidt, supported by Phillips. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's received and filed. Um, item number nine, it's a resolution for uh, Virginia Bessinger. Does anyone want to um, allow that person to Motion, retire? retire? Yes. Motion by Nagovin, support by Burke. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. She may retire. And next is item number 10, the voucher listings, uh, the bills as of July 24, 2019. Motion by um, Bush, support by Nagovin. Any comments or questions on the bills? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The bills are paid. Wow. Next is the management report. You guys are on such a roll, I hate to interrupt it. If you just want to approve my report now. Uh, good evening, everybody. Annette, thank you very much for the, uh, the, the people cookies. Um, uh, Cindy Robinson, our communications person, um, has been in touch with um, Annette's staff. We're going to get more detail on the... Um, Hashtag less labels, more respect. And we'll, um, if the board's, with the board's approval, of course, we can um, look at rolling that out um, within our county system as well. Um, I was at the director's forum yesterday in Lansing. Um, it was the, the Community Mental Health Association of Michigan. We met with folks from the th um, department, got some updates. Um, They've met again today, but um, I wasn't able to make today's session. But from yesterday, one of the um, interesting points that had come up earlier was that the, the new administration in Lansing was looking at a system redesign and moving the Medical Service Administration, which is the physical health side of Medicaid, um, together with Behavioral Health and, Deve and Developmental Disabilities Administration, which is our side, um, and putting those two departments together. Apparently there's about um, maybe two dozen staff under the uh, Behavioral Health Developmental Disabilities Administration, you know, and hundreds under MSA. So our fear was uh, being uh, swept under the rug or into that bigger picture. So we'll continue to advocate for our side. Um, there was mention of communication and getting the word out. Uh, our website redesign did start yesterday um, and it's going well. So hopefully in the near future, um, you'll all be able to um, surf our new website. Um, we are sharing that with our Consumer Advisory Council, um, getting provider feedback, um, other community feedback as well. Um, Cindy will be touching base with uh, folks here from Macomb County um, about any connection to to their website as well so it's off to a good start um, internally I've mentioned before the rock projects or the the 90-day projects we they started in April um, we're continuing the to move forward with three of them the one is self-determination, which uh, we did have uh, Laura Manza and I met with uh, a group of the, the parents and went into more detail. Um, but we're not doing the, the whole shift of our self-determination model. But there's still some differences that we need to drill down on, so we're going to continue to look at those areas. Um, the residential rock, 
was looking at um, how the services are assessed for people living primarily in specialized residential homes. They've already started. They, they have a working draft of the assessment. They've completed it on five or six facilities. And uh, now we'll be looking at the, see what the impact is on the financial model. We're looking for this pretty much to be cost neutral across the board. Um, from my past experience, that's what happened. Um, if you do it right the first time. So we're uh, carefully moving forward in that one. Mobile crisis, um, Sheila's team has um, started with children's services and they are going out to do the face-to-face -face screenings um, whenever a child presents in crisis. The initial results now, they, they hit the 70% diversion mark in the second month. And if you recall, right now we're, um, we're only diverting about 30% of everybody. Um, we're already diverting 70% of the children. So now we'll be looking to expand that on the adult side, which is the bigger side. Um, but we're off to a very good start, so thank you very much. And uh, Sheila's team did respond to a, a family situation on Sunday. So Sheila and I mm -hmm. were texting and talking and uh, we're able to divert a child on Sunday even. So thank you, Sheila. Um, this morning was the um, Medicaid. There was a webinar with Milliman and the, the department about our Medicaid capitation rates. Um, I checked with some people who were on that call and because my takeaway was that it was pretty positive and I, I was concerned that I thought it was positive after getting off a phone call like that. Um, yeah, I just had to check my reality. And um, so we're getting more detail, more transparency than ever before. Um, just earlier, it was this week, the end of last week, we, we were able to see the Milliman um, data set, and they have it set up where we can filter um, that down to um, a lot of detail that will be very helpful in managing our, our county going forward. We'll also be able to um, look at our information against all of the other state um, parts of the state of Michigan or individual counties here and there. Again, we can do down to a service code and see how we compare. So. They haven't released the licensing information on that yet, but it should be out soon. These rates are not set. These are, it says results are subject to change and represent draft regression model impacts. Um, but at the end of their discussion, we came out at a 1.9% increase in the, in the capitation rates, which again, when I looked at that, I was like, eh. But um, we're the third best um, results in this. So Region 10 is at 2.7, Lakeshore is at 3.8% increase. We're third at 1.9, the lowest goes to negative 4.4%, which unfortunately is Southwest Michigan Behavioral Health. So that's how, when they crunched this data, that's how it shook out um, at this point in time we have another sh brief window here to make sure all the data for the first half of this fiscal year is there for them to see. Um, and then we'll have to actually wait till the first revenue file comes over to see how it all shakes out. But we will have detail enough to go into that data system and see why we ended up the way we did. And this is a first. so. Um, I do have a list of the risk factors that they're looking at. So again, we'll be working internally to put um, attention on those areas, make sure that they're all being reported and being reported as accurately as possible. Um, thank you for the approval of the uh, 2020 contract and the Fourth Amendment. Um, I'll move those both forward. Um, <laughs> And I'll end there tonight, I think. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Linda. 
I have two questions on the rock. I know those are um, uh, new initiatives, and, and thanks um, for coming up with that. I know they're kind of like down and dirty hits that um, you said just 90 days. Is there a need to report some some of those because they are change and they might impact clients to report some of those just like I don't know how to the board or not at all I mean I just did oh um, <laughs> should I look at my emails I, no I gave the verbal update I can share more the um, each area has its uh, metrics that are um, the goal is to complete all your metrics within 90 days so there is an art to drafting those um, and then these continuation ones all have specific um, metrics that they're intended to meet as well. Oh, for um, I added a fourth one. Apologies. Um, we're looking at access. Um, Adam and I are actually pulling that one together. We wanted to, f the metrics were to learn the process Milliman uses to calculate the penetration rate. And I do think I have the, enough detail on that right now develop a plan to increase our penetration rates um, fr because from those Milliman reports, Macomb um, is one of the lowest. So out of all of the eligible um, DAB members um, in Macomb County, we're not seeing as many of them as a percentage as the other regions are. Evaluate our current referral process to providers, make recommendations in that area. Um, and then our open access, which has been going very well, but we've been under the benefit of a legislative grant for $1 million. So going into October, we need to make sure that um, we have systems in place to uh, run the open access without the benefit of the legislative grant. So that's what we'll be working on for uh, July, August, and September. Thanks, and the uh, second one is, at our work group, I think we left it that Barb would get a date from us. Did I miss an email for inquiring to set the next date for the next email? The next oh. uh, work group meeting? Or we I don't think that's serve. gone out, but okay. we will. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Uh, any other questions or any other items? Um, I would just like to talk about the work group. We had called the work group, our first work group meeting uh, related to the finance, uh, the, uh, actually it was the quarterly report. And um, we had we had some people there, the timing of it was, it followed another meeting, so it did, time-wise, people had to leave, I realize that. But um, again, if you have any questions or any concerns about that, please get questions to Dave, email your questions to Dave. Even, and I, I've said it before, even if you don't understand it, because when I started out, I couldn't even formulate a question. So, um, because I didn't have enough knowledge to even ask a question, but then put that, put that down. Just say, I, I don't understand how A relates to B. Whatever it is you need to know, please, please um, send your comments to um, Dave. And if you're too embarrassed to send it to Dave, just send it to me and I'll, I'll um, translate it for you, because been there, done that, so. Um, and we, yeah, we will try to get another meeting called together real soon. Anything else? Brian. You want to be CC'd on those? Sure, if you want to. But okay. In fact, you might, if you have other people you want to CC, because sometimes one person's question stimulates another question for someone else. So okay. send, them to, send them to everyone if you want to. Anyone else? Okay, then that, um, oh, that was, I kind of went into the other, do we usually take a motion to receive and file his report? Sometimes. We Sometimes do. we do. All right, is there a motion to file the report, the management report? Motion to file the report. Support, report. all right, motion by Nagovin, support by Fantuzzi. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next is then we're back to the hearing of the public. And this is an uh, opportunity again for anyone from the public to speak to this board. You have five minutes to do so. Please um, identify yourselves and give us an, an address. And a work location is good too. Okay. 
Hi, I'm Lori Doyle. I'm the peer support coordinator in CMH. And I'd like to thank all of you for making me feel so welcome at the last meeting. I appreciate that. Um, so much so that I brought another peer with me. <laughs> uh, this is Nancy Worthman. She works um, in admin two days a week at the Liberty's Drop-In Center. And she works at First Southwest three days a week. And she would like to share a part of her story with you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for having me. Um, I'm here because I want to read a post that my daughter put on Facebook regarding stigma. Um, we lost, I lost my son, Dominic, and she lost her brother, Dominic, to heroin overdose. Mm -hmm. This is what it says. Long post. I'm not always the best with words, but I've tried to articulate the best I can the way I feel about this subject. This is not a place for debate. Just want to use our story to do my part in ending the stigma. Today marks a whole year since Dominic left us. May 23rd will always be labeled the day that I lost the person I was supposed to have by my side forever. I haven't been the same since. I never will be. I still cry myself to sleep some nights and I think about him most of each day. I daydream about what life could have been like. One day watching me walk down the aisle, getting our families together for dinner on Sundays, and my future children getting to play with their Uncle Dominic, who I know would have loved them unconditionally and made them laugh for hours on end. I so wish that this could have been our reality and the reality of other families going through this, whether it's due to drugs or otherwise. But I won't spend this day or any day only remembering what could have been. I will also remember what was. I'll remember his smile that lit up a whole room. I'll remember the truest unconditional love I've ever known. I'll spend this day using my voice for those who are struggling with addiction, those who have family members struggling with addiction, and those who usually wouldn't think twice about someone struggling with addiction. I'm using this platform to do my part in trying to end, end the stigma, excuse me, Dominic and others like him trying to end the stigma. Dominic and others like him aren't just the drug addict. Dominic was a loving son, brother, father, grandson, nephew, cousin, friend. He was obnoxious in the best way possible. He could talk for hours and would laugh so hard that it would take twice as long to tell the story he was trying to tell. He was a huge support to the ones that he loved and only wanted to see us succeed. He had the biggest sweet tooth for some of his favorite ch chocolate milk and double dark chocolate Milano cookies. And he loved when I cooked and always said it was so delicious, even when it probably wasn't even that good. He worked long and hard hours at work, and he loved making people smile. But Dominic was battling different demons than some of us are. The point of this post is not to debate if drug addiction is a choice or a disease. Please don't comment on this post looking for a debate. The point is that Dominic wasn't just addicted to drugs. He was a whole living, breathing person with lots of love, dreams, and laughs to share. Before you pass judgment on someone, remember we all have our demons. Some are just different than others. If you take the time to understand addiction and those battling with it, I think that maybe, if you don't already, you might find it in your heart to feel for them. They are people. They are loved by so many. They are somebody's child, parent, sibling, grandparent, friend, etc. They are somebody, period. If you are somebody battling with addiction, I know that you are worth getting sober for. Know that although sometimes you may not feel like it, you are needed. Please get the help that you deserve. I know that you have to want to be helped and not everyone is ready, but the reality of this is dark.
The next time you swallow that pill or shoot up could very well be the last thing you do. Dominic acted like he couldn't be touched, but I think deep down he was terrified. Um, sorry. My doors are always open for anyone looking for an open ear with no judgment. I may not have been able to save Dominic, but I'll be damned if I don't die trying to save another family from the heartache mine has experienced. And that was written by Victoria Worthen, my daughter. Can you stand up? Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to mention how um, CMH has helped me um, I've been able to go to any of my co-workers when I was down, when I was struggling, and I needed somebody to talk to. They were there for me, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Is there anyone else that would like to address this board? Hi. I know you heard from me last month. My name is Alicia Oaks. I have three kids that suffer from various forms of mental health. And I want to say that over the last week, for the first time, I feel let down by my staff. I don't want to attack them because my staff truly are wonderful people. What happened wasn't one of my staff members. It was the director of the juvenile court who appeared at a motion hearing on Monday and discussed not my son that is in juvenile court, but he discussed intimate details of my 10-year-old's case in an open forum in public, which is a HIPAA violation. I brought that to my case manager's attention. I even spoke briefly on the phone with her supervisor today, and I'm not satisfied that anything's going to be done about that. That hurts me. My 10-year-old suffers from very, very severe mental health issues. We're talking he's had 10 inpatient hospital stays. That's the severity of the issues I deal with with him. And quite frankly, I don't need those details spilled out in a public setting, especially when he's not under the jurisdiction of the court. Now, I will say that my case manager supervisor does have a meeting with me tomorrow at 2 o'clock where we can continue the discussion that she did not have enough time to finish today. And I respect her time, and I understand that she's a very busy individual. But I would like to know that going forward, that when my kids are discussed at community team, those details are not going to be just spilled out for anybody and everybody to hear. And I think that my son has privacy concerns at this point in time. That's not what I originally wanted to talk to you about today, but I figured I would start with that and let you know what's happened to us. What I wanted to start back is to go all the way back to December when all of these things happened in our family and my 12-year-old made some very poor decisions and ended up on in the court system. He was suicidal and I took him to Beaumont Hospital. He was approved for an inpatient stay where we sat there for 14 days. 14 days that no hospital accepted him because of his pending criminal actions. 14 days that I had to rearrange my entire family and my entire schedule to try to accommodate an adult being at the hospital with him until finally, I think it was 11 days in, they admitted him to the pediatric floor to where I didn't have to be there 24 hours a day with him. Because you see, at most hospitals, when we take our children to the hospital, even if they're approved for services, if they can't be transferred, an adult has to be there 24 hours a day with them, even though they have sitters at the hospital. And so, when he left, he was discharged on the day after Christmas. It was December 26th, and we were supposed to have an intake with the diversion team. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but that did not happen. So then a couple days later, we met the diversion team. Now, I had already met members of the diversion team because my other son has been in services since we've lived in Macomb County, and he's been in the wraparound program for a year and a half now. And so I was already familiar with Roxanne, and I was already familiar with Sharna, and they came into our home to help transition to services, and Dakota is now also in the wraparound program. 
So I don't have one kid in the most intensive services. I have two kids in the most intensive services. That's a big time commitment on my behalf, and I do it because I love my kids. I may not have given birth to them, but I love them with every fiber of my being, and I'm going to advocate for them and let people know what's truly happening out there in our community. I don't know what this board can do because I realize it's not a local problem, it's a statewide problem. There shouldn't be the process of being able to cherry pick which kids get hospitalizations because with Jordan, I'm always told he's too aggressive for our hospital. So Havenwick never accepts him. That's always their reason for denying a hospital admission is that he's too aggressive. And so what we have is a system where I don't know that there's enough beds for the kids that need them in Michigan. And I think that allows the hospitals to be able to cherry pick which cases they want. So they're going to take the kid who's just a little bit depressed and maybe a little bit suicidal versus the kid that might actually need those resources. And I don't know if there's anything that the board can do at a statewide level. I can tell you that I'll be advocating at that level too. I've written letters. I plan on speaking to individuals because I think that at the statewide and especially at a funding level, mental health needs to be reevaluated in Michigan. I know that Macomb County lost money and then the Michigan Supreme Court that very week was boasting about how they give 16 million to Berrien County. Where did that money come from? It come from our county. I know that because I know Macomb County lost $35 million in funding. And so I'm not really sure how to effectively advocate and I'm willing to listen to anybody who wants to help me in this journey of advocating for services for the kids in our county and, and for my kids. And I want to thank you because I know that you sit in a tough position and you have to make very tough decisions, especially when you're getting budget cuts from individuals who probably don't understand how the services are already being cut to families in our county. And so I just want to thank you for your dedication and thank you for listening to me and I hope you all have a good night. Thank you. Um, we'll make sure somebody gets back with you, but did you sign in? There's a, okay, so someone will get back with you on. Thank you for bringing this, those issues to our attention. Is there anyone else that would like to address this board? Hello, I'm Kathy Swantek. I am executive director for Blue Water Developmental Housing, a nonprofit um, that provides residential services to people with developmental disabilities. And I'd like to make the board aware that the Direct Care Wage Coalition is starting to ramp up their efforts to do advocacy for increasing the direct care wage for fiscal year 1920. Um, we have already started working and addressing this issue with the House and Senate appropriation um, chairs, as well as the DHHS um, Director Gordon. And I would encourage this board, whenever you can, to please advocate on the behalf of providers in the state of Michigan, because I know you're all aware of the staffing crisis that we have here. And if we cannot hire the staff, and I know um, I have had many conversations with many providers um, in my role as Vice President of the Macomb County Provider Alliance, they are struggling. It's a real challenge just to get people into the door. So please, whatever you can, please advocate on behalf of your providers in Macomb County. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Is there anyone else that would like to address this board? Good evening. I'm uh, Sean McGregor with Creative Empowerment Opportunities. Just uh, given our monthly report, um, the CEO hosted the annual summer picnic on June 28th. The individual served, enjoyed a petting zoo, Civil War reenactment, popcorn, cotton candy, karaoke, and fellowship. The individual served monthly edu educational seminar is on how to survive the summer months. For our community center update, our Clinton Township location, their horticultural program has been producing a lot of vegetables out of their garden boxes. 
The veggies are used in cooking classes held at the community center. The individuals served in the work skills program have been busy with packaging for Faro Industries. Individuals served have volunteered at the local churches and metro parks at uh, CO Anchorville. They have been attending Creative Academy classes. The program went on an educational boat ride through the metro park, through metro parks with money donated by Knights of Columbus. The volunteer site St. John Lutheran Church hosted the pizza party to express their appreciation for volunteer services. The program hosted an ice cream social and as well Anchorville opened the giving room which has free clothing, household items for individuals served and employees. And our micro business for the month was um, Paracel pens and um, beach notepads, which I have for everybody. <clears throat> At our Mount Clemens location, they increased greater community opportunities in the past month and had two additional new individuals start. Knights of Columbus also donated money, which was used to take an educational boat ride on Lake, Lake St. Clair. Our Washington location has received a new roof and made a Facebook page was a Facebook page was developed for the micro business for on cloud design. Um, classroom one and the ladies bathroom has been repainted. The parking lot has received repairs in the greater community da daily percentage is 50 to 60 percent. The program is going to parks, creative academies, movies, museums and volunteering for Meals on Wheels. <coughs> As well, they are doing a Pamper Yourself date night basket. I have tickets if anyone's ever interested in buying, but I have flyers for everyone. For our stakeholder update, CEO has submitted our application for CARF resurvey. The survey will be scheduled in the time period of November slash December of 19. Our current accreditation in community services will expire in January of the new year. Um, and a final note, CEO employees and retention rate for 2019 was 96%. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And Sean does have another life. I actually saw him at uh, one of our township parks and rec events. So <laughs> with you there with his family. Anyone else? Would anyone else like to address this board? Seeing no one else, we will move on to item number 14, which is adjournment. Motion to adjourn by Burke. Supported by Schmidt. All in favor, signify by saying aye. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>